How is hey, everybody, everybody doing today? Victor Kurz, Mark and Licker, we're yep, back we in are, the saddle. We're back. Back in the saddle again, as uh, Steve and Tyler would say. And we've got an interesting matchup, a tribal zoo versus a more, would you say traditional kind of <laughs> zooier type deck? Neither one of these is traditional, but I in some ways it's like a mirror matchup. Uh, we've got three color mid-range zoo versus five color mid-range zoo. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's pretty neat. I, I actually, I've played this matchup um, from Chris's angle. And it, it was favorable for me, but I think Chris's deck is doing some different things. Yeah, I my, think my understanding is that Chris is basically playing thirty creatures, three Domries, and like five spells. Yeah, I, I see a path and a Domri in yeah. his hand. Uh Tarma Wave and a tireless tracker. I gotta imagine right off the bat that Chris is gonna be favored in this just because Typically, in these kind of mirror matches, the deck that goes a little bit bigger is often going to be favored. I think that's going to be more often the case. Yeah, well, so it is true that um, in, in some ways, Alan's deck can go bigger than Chris's. So Chris has um, Knight of the Reliquary, I believe. Mm -hmm. But he's also, Chris's deck is also full of, um, like, tiny things. Like, I think he has, like, Stranglerout Geist and Narnum Renegade. Um, whereas Alan might even be on like a like a Geist of Saint Traff plan. Yep. Oh, there it is. Okay, here's a Geist. So this is one of the cards that is pretty dope here. Um, swings for three, uh, hard to interact with for Chris. Oh <laughs> well, Blessed Alliance off the top. Okay, whatever. <laughs> and I, I, we're kind of in an interesting spot here for Chris because he's got a handful of green cards and no green mana, but he's got a Ghost Quarter. So does he want a Ghost Quarter himself to turn on his thing? <laughs> I think he may need to do that. Next so turn. you think you think he floats floats ro floats red white to blessed alliance? And he's got about to get blown out by this blessed. I can't. Alliance. I can't. Why is Chris? Ooh, actually, no. Never mind. You don't even really get blown out because of the angel token. So never mind. This does not work nearly as well as I thought it did. So he's gonna have to. Yeah, it's to path. Oh, pretty, sure. He has to path the token. Pretty rough, little. Wait, but you can one for two. But no, you all you have to do is no. He's played that wrong. I I believe you have to have to you have to blessed alliance in response to that trigger. And yeah, then it, that would make sense. Yeah. I, I so that's you that definitely don't case. have to. You don't have to waste. Uh, your that's path a pretty there. niche I scenario. That's well, that's I've a pretty really that's a pretty before. common scenario. And and Chris, that that's a huge deal. He's basically just wasted a path out of his hand. He's to save him. his path. There basically says you gain four life and give your opponent a basic land. <laughs> um, that's horrible. Yeah, that's not. <laughs> yeah, all you have optimal. to do is bless it in response to the like with that angel trigger on the stat. It's an attack trigger. And so the card is the the geist is already attacking, and this is the reason to play the deck. People give me a lot of crap <laughs> yeah. for saying that this card is good. This card is one of the best cards, and in, in I think it's probably the best four drop planeswalker in modern. I think it's better than Ajani Vengeance. I think it's better than Nahiri. I think it's better than Jace Architect of Thought. Here today. I think it's I think it's better than Hase Architect of Thought. That's a Hase. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's better than Hase. Uh, I mean, all those cards are good. They all serve a purpose. This one is the, just the most generally best. I mean, it's it's really powerful. The, the minus two sleep effect leaves it with two loyalty, and that sleep effect is generally going to mean it can plus up once or twice. You can plus up on your guys or your opponent's guys to generate card advantage, and the minus seven is actually super relevant and powerful, unlike some Planeswalkers whose ultimates are, like, not super relevant. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of this card. Um, there, there have been some like big zoo or you know four color, five color tribal flame zoo decks that show up just playing like three or four of of these Tamiyos online. I saw one on MTG top eight last week that was like twenty seven creatures, four bolts, four paths, and four Tamiyos. <laughs> and the card's just a house. I mean, considering a tribal zoo deck, I think tribal zoo deck rather. Uh, I think you're gonna. It comes with the connotation of being aggressive, low to the ground, get you dead, tribal flames you. When you're at ten or something like that, but I mean, playing four drops and some pretty impactful three and four drops, which well, that's really that's what most tribal flame zoo decks look like now. Um, they're really just five color good stuff decks. Yeah, I mean, because I I am moderately familiar with the tribal flames death shadow deck that did kind of appear a little bit. Oh, a few like months the monastery ago. swiss beer kind yeah, of. So you, yeah, that that's a pretty different breed from this kind of five color one. Um, this is more similar to the deck uh, that Reed Duke played for a little bit uh, a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. um, Alan might even have four and five drops in his sideboard. Um, sometimes these decks roll with like Linvalas and Thundermaw Hellkites. That does sound pretty sweet. I mean, he's got a lot of lands in his hand. I don't know if how many lands this deck plays, but yeah. 
He's got a lot, and doesn't really seem to be a whole lot to do with it. Plays a Tarmogoyf to kind of hold down the board, but really Chris has kind of stumbled pretty heavily on colored mana. Finally was able to cast a green spell, thanks to the hidden mode on Ghost Quarter of Ghost Quarter yourself for a bit of mana fixing. Yep, which not, you know, not bad. Never feels great. Always an option. Never always feels great, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> yeah, you know? that's so right. Either cast my spells or don't cast my spells. And we're and gonna see the, the tracker get tribal flames. That seems good. I think that's reasonable. I mean, his opponent's stuck on lands. He's probably got a pretty decent hand. And he just kind of wants to ride this card advantage engine that he's got in play as much as he can. Yeah, I'm telling you, to me, on an empty board, it's just a hell of a card. Um, I th I think that's got to be the case with m most planeswalkers, though. Well, that's not you say? that's not really true, though. Um, I mean, that's you know, her her plus one is is so dominant. Um, Go for the free shuffle off of the path, which I like. Doesn't grab a basic, just the the shuffle. <laughs> res a commendable move. Very admirable. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Draws a Snapcaster Mage. That's sweet. Yeah. Snapcastering uh, a Tribal Flames. That's uh, No, his Tribal Flames is only a four one. damage. Okay, now now it's five damage with mm -hmm. that Shocked and Hallowed Fountain. And I'm not exactly certain how big these Tarmogos are. If we could have our Spotter Monkey have them throw down a die for us, that would be... Just wonderful, you know. It'd be greatly appreciated. Four or five, cool. So looks like a snap tribal flames would be lethal here. Or not lethal. Lethal for the time of I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> Which I'm curious if he wants to do this. I gotta imagine he does, just because he wants to It seems fine. I mean you put a two one in play and it's an it's an automatic two for one here. I mean that seems and fine. I, you still can't really do anything to this Planeswalker, which will <laughs> eventually take over the game. So an example of a Planeswalker that's not good on an open board is Domri Raid. <laughs> the card is just, <laughs> and, and as we see, Chris has one in hand right now. That card's pretty underwhelming. It's usually going to cantrip, but it, then it can easily die. Uh, and he doesn't even always cantrip. And yeah, this it might cantrip. <laughs> we've played a bit of Protect the Queen here, and now we may see a Tamiya ultimate next turn. Get a little... Is it Omniscience? Is that the... Yeah, you get Omniscience and you draw three cards. <laughs> so Ancestral plus Omniscience, not bad. Yeah. Um, not bad. Goblin Rabble Master coming in. Wonder if he's going to chump with this Snapcaster Mage. He decides to, which means I think we can say pretty certainly that we are going to see a uh, ultimate here. I can't imagine why he'd throw a Snapcaster under a 1-1 Goblin. Yeah. You, Otherwise... You could, you could plus one up again if you have another creature, but yeah, I, I'm also fine Do with it. the ultimate. Uh, Do it. You tap can any it's mana. actually also it's kind of funny. You can actually oh, um, tap mana. Interesting. If you plus one on the uh, on the rabber mat on the rabble master. Um, oh, he is plusing. Yeah, I, I think plusing's fine. So he's going to give uh, plus one to the pride mage and plus one to the uh, the rabble master. So what that means is that oh, he's going to bolt it anyway. <laughs> okay, never mind. I was going <laughs> to explain what that means for his potential blocking attacking and generating card advantage options well, next turn. Well, if he if he hangs out for a second, lets the goblin rabble master and the goblin token attack, you'd think it would be better to block the token and then bolt, would you not? So that way you can at least still get a card draw off of it. Well, you only get a card draw when it deals damage, but the with the 2/2 two -two blocking deal damage count as a way to draw a card. Yeah, if you did it, if you did it after damage, yeah, if you do it yeah. after the damage step, yeah. Well, I'm thinking after combat. He's sure. swinging it with the 1-1 one, one and the 3-2 yeah, yeah, yeah. Rabble Master. But he and doesn't have to swing with Rabble Master, right? Only the tokens have that clause. Is that right? Yes. Yes. So I'm, not, I'm not even sure he if he would have swung with the Rabble Master. Yeah, that's, there, I, that's interesting. I feel like you've <coughs> got to put pressure on this. I mean, if this Planeswalker ultimates and is then still sticking around, that's rough. Oh, I mean, the game's <laughs> been over for a while. <laughs> but hey, I said, I, you know, I said that round one. Yeah, I mean, he did uh, just draw a pretty sizable <coughs> knight. Which, unless if he draws a path, he may just not be able to answer it. He's just sitting with two lands in play, so doesn't really have too yeah, much. Yeah. So the thing is, here on. if you're Allen, however, if you're Allen, you could just use Tamio's minus two here um, and freeze it. And by the way, the minus two taps non-land permanents, not just creatures. <laughs> not that that's relevant here, but Tamio, I'm I'm telling you, Tamio, I think is is tied for the best, if not the best, four drop planeswalker in the format. Draw three. I stand, I stand by that statement. We got we got some spells. You know it'd be sick. What? <laughs> if if he uses Kasali Pride Mage to blow up this clue token, <laughs> <laughs> sick that would be sick a line. Tech. What, what that a would be a line. What a versatile I, card. Few people have seen. Just, what a role player that Pride Mage. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. <clears throat> Doing a little searching for the emblem here, kind of. I don't know why, <laughs> but.
A little take, scummy. <laughs> just a little scummy. T- they're taking this commentary <laughs> part very seriously, you know. They want to <laughs> give a show. That's right. Which I can respect. And they didn't actually find it. We just put a random emblem face down. Oh, so I guess that four was its total power, not the number of lands in the graveyard. So he is able to just oh, yeah. tribal flames sure. it down. Yeah, I, I have no idea why people put dice out for a Knight of the Reliquary. Um, I don't even understand why people put it out for Goyf. For Goyf makes a little more sense, but when people put dice out for knights, like it's, it's just it's just a static ability. You can count it real quick. It just gets in the way. People think it's counters, or there's a confusion about what's it. You know what's added. It doesn't have mm-hmm. any counters, and that's not the land count. Or sometimes it is the land count. Yeah. Like the, when people put when people try to put their dice on my knights of the reliquary, I get really mad. <laughs> I think that's reasonable. I just because you it. can especially <laughs> in competitive uh, you can get I just trouble move their correct dice. if that information is incorrect. Like I, I, well, exactly, I understand exactly. Case, no, that's exactly right. It can't be misrepresented. Um, so get your dice out of my out of my play mat. <laughs> Got a little bit of fetching action. This is not looking good for our boy Chris here. He's sitting on this clue token. Opted not to play the voice, so I imagine he's going to be popping this clue token, hold up this path. This time we rate has certainly not we, looked great this we, game. We dropped a card. Ooh. A little, no worries, little we found it. We going found it. On. Yeah, this is a little sus. <laughs> Pass the Tarmogoyf. Seems, uh... I presume in his upkeep. Too, too late, but, uh... Remember that first path that Chris threw away <laughs> that we're never getting back again? On the, uh, the angel token? Yes. That was Rip. sad. <laughs> yeah, for those of you who don't know, public service announcement here. Um, <laughs> you can Blessed Alliance a Geist uh, in response to the angel coming out, and it's still an attacking creature, and then they actually have to sack it. Rather than Assuming the Geist is attacking alone. Yeah. Which, I'm sure you guys could have deduced that. So, we're just casting spells for free. No big deal. Just bang, bang. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Take five. Eat it. (laughs) Taste it. What did you just say? Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Oh, yeah, exactly, yeah. And then taste it. So, he's got him at nine. He's got some pretty anemic threats in play. But he's also got a lightning helix in play and a criminal (laughs) answer. So, looks like we're playing burn. Yeah. Got a little bit of a burn deck here, which I'm into that. <laughs> so to me, burn this the slow, slow demise. This colored mana situation really has not gotten any better for Chris. Playing one spell a turn is that his fourth path or his third? One, that would be the I third. Th- I, I think believe. it might be the fourth. Really, the first one on the angel, the second one on the goif. Was there another one in there? I feel like I. It is the fourth. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's uh. <laughs> Maybe maybe he should have been pathing his own guys here to try to get another land. Yeah, I mean that that does bring <laughs> up that could have been a possibility that could have been right at some point, but yeah, I think this game's been over. Yeah, okay, this game, yeah. scoop it this up, game scoop has it felt up. a little bit out of reach for a long time. Yeah, so both players in this game too do want to try to go bigger than the other. Um, I think definitionally, Alan's deck is already a little bit bigger than Chris's. Obviously, um, Tribal Flames is a big five damage card, and then he's got threats like Geist in this Tamiyo. Chris can fall back on the Domeries. The Domeries actually are good on the play here, mm-hmm. and they can generate a lot of value. Yeah, um, but especially I know turn two Domeries. Yeah, turn two strong. Domeries dope. Um, but Chris also has uh, cards like Thrun, the last troll, mm-hmm. uh, in his sideboard. Um, he's got two Kitchen Finks. I'm not sure how good those are here. Um, I I wouldn't bring him in, but I suppose it's an option. I looking at Alan's sideboard. I didn't get a chance to look at Chris's, but Alan had some <laughs> some spicy numbers in his board, including a Karanos. Yep, I saw, I saw the Karanos. Which, I'm into that. I would. I think that is definitely going to be coming yeah. in this matchup. Other cards, I'm not sure, and I'm going to default on your judgment here as the Zoo Boy, the Naya Boy. The Zoo Boy, wow. Um, the Zoo Keeper, if you will. Would Is there any merit to bringing in timely reinforcements in this matchup? Uh, I've always been impressed with that card. I think that card's dead. I... No, I, I wouldn't bring it in if I were Alan. I, I mean, I suppose you could. Just all if those you, chump blockers for your the, the thing is, you in, like in Alan's, <laughs> I don't think Alan can guarantee that he's at a lower life total than Chris. Obviously, Alan is playing five colors of Shocklands, mm-hmm. which is how he gets lower you know, life than a lot of people. Mm-hmm. But Chris is also playing, I mean, I guess Alan doesn't necessarily know what Chris is on, but I think he gets the idea. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, and Chris, you know, both of them are pretty good. Both guest. of them are on a are on a deck where you are, you know, it's no guarantee that you'll have less creatures, and it's no guarantee that you'll have less life. I just don't like. I just don't like it here. Um, I suppose it's a nice way to protect your Tamio for a bit, or your other your other planeswalkers if you're relying on some big four drop planeswalkers. But I, I don't like it, especially when you know that both. I mean. You must know that Chris has Keswick Wolfrun with uh, Knight of the Reliquary, and Keswick Wolfrun makes timely reinforcements just look like a a bad card. I love when people play it against me because it's like not a it's like not a real problem. I just don't mm -hmm. I don't really care. I mean, it's annoying when like Green White Tron plays it, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and in, I'm coming in this, from the in this kind of value in this kind of value mirror, the card's just not that valuable. Yeah, I you mean, especially my perspective is mostly a Nahiri player, which going turn three timely into turn three Nahiri just sure that seems makes good. it pretty hard for them to push through damage sure. on and, and I'm sure that turn 3 timely into turn 4 to me is pretty good too mm -hmm. but um, not going to be super consistent yeah, I well can't the, imagine he's playing like 4 no, cameos no that well game. actually I, there are the lists online the, the 4 color 5 color zoo decks playing to me right now most of them to me is the crux of the deck and they are playing 3 or 4 I didn't. I, did, I haven't seen Alan's main board that's, though. That's I w gross. I wouldn't be surprised if he. Had <laughs> I don't think I'm into that. Anymore. I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if he had three. I mean, it's a it's a real it's a very very real card. I'm telling you, best or tied for best four drop walker in the format. Definitely better you know, than getting I'm, an ally as Zendikar. I'm not sold on that, but I I'm. I like to consider myself an open minded individual, so you know maybe I could be convinced. Now another qu another card I saw in Alan's sideboard that I'm curious about uh, is Blessed Alliance. Do you think that has any merit here? It's it's okay. Um, Blessed Alliance is is great for Chris, who knows his opponent is is on Geist. So I wonder if Alan is rethinking having Geist in the deck uh, for this game too. Yeah, but I mean honestly, I don't love Geist in matchups where it can be blocked fairly easily, and it seemed like yeah, it could exactly. be blocked fairly yeah. easily by pretty much every creature. Yeah, bas basically every single out. one. So, um, I so I, if I were Alan, I'd be taking it out. But if I'm Chris, both players have, I think, two Blessed Alliance in the 75, and I think both players want to have both of them. Um, in this, in the 60? Yeah, the it's, game? it's a sweet So I assume both of them have knights. We know Chris has knight. The card's really sweet with Knight. And um, the hidden mode on Blessed Alliance, I might add, is much better in a matchup like this. I feel like yes. you can get some pretty sick ambush blocks. No, it's it's, in, with it's the insane. Claws. I mean, if you if you have two six six knights and your opponent has two four five goyfs, but y their goyfs are lethal, you can just swing with your knights, and depending on their life total, if they just declare no blocks, then mm -hmm. you just untap your knights, and then each one sacks a land, and then gets a fetch land and cracks it, and each knight grows by four and then you just kill them oh, baby. or if they <laughs> if it's not lethal even doing that and they just don't block they just make them take the damage and they swing with their goys for lethal and then you untap your knights it's just it's disgusting especially in these decks yeah i mean you know, where even they're, they're gonna be having a very close combat game if the game goes evenly and theoretically inside a combat could you attack with knights yes and, and untap it and sack lands. still in combat sack lands yeah that's dirty yes it is it's that's super dirty, dirty. <laughs> um so yeah, Blessed Alliance is just a really pliable card here. It, it it matters so much for the combat, for protecting your walkers. Both players have some high impact walkers. Um, it matters a lot with Knight of the Reliquary. It even matters with cards like Grim Lava Mancer getting multiple activations. The life total is always relevant, and usually worst case scenario, it's going to serve as a less guaranteed path that doesn't give your opponent a land. Now. Starting the game off, I believe Chris has taken a mulligan to six, and I think he scried at the top and then had the classic fetch <laughs> into his turn one play. Yep. It could be wrong, he could have scried to the bottom. Ultimately, it didn't really matter because he shuffled that deck. <clears throat> yeah, that's one of the things that makes the scry rule uh, favorable for... That's, that's one of the ways they tried to equalize the play and the draw, because mm -hmm. the scry is much more valuable to the player on the draw because you don't have to worry about fetching away your scry. Now a turn two Rabble Master. That's that's scary. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's that's, that's, that's a lot of pressure. Yeah, that's kind of putting you putting you to the test. Do you yeah. have an answer for this? Um, I've seen a Helix, so looks like he won't just stone cold die to this. But I mean, if he didn't, that'd be scary. And I mean, he's eyeballing this Tarmogoyf, which I think I'd be inclined just to get this guy off the board right now. Yeah, the, go the Goyf would only be what a a one two <laughs> or a two three uh, at most by the next turn. So I, I don't think you I don't think you want the Goyf here. So yeah, but I think the Helix is fine. We shall see. We shall see. If he had, if he had Helix, and then he could tap this, uh, this hierarch and play in a coddle, that would be dope. But I don't think that's what we'll see. All right. Are you content though? If you are, Alan here, just 
jam in a uh, helix, maybe an attack. Ooh, we are seeing Nakato. Okay, Nakato Helix seems like a really good play. Yep. Yep. I'm in. Yeah, that's that. the play I want every time. <clears throat> that is a good a good turn too. Indeed. Especially in response to a pretty aggressive owner opening rather from your Is opposition. that a Domri though? I am seeing a Domri so and we seeing could a scavenger. We could see Domri uh Domri can make this goblin fight this hierarch, and that's actually a pretty good play too. The problem is that you then rely on the bird to chump block this mm -hmm. Nakato. But um, I think that play is fine. Is he going to do it? He may just plus. Just plus to try to draw? Yeah, plus to try to draw. Oh, Draws a noble. So he does draw, so drawing is fine. But, I mean, the Domri, I guess he just has to chump with this goblin to keep the yeah. goblin around. Well, no, that goblin has to. It. Oh, no. no. Not, not without that. Not without no, the goblin, goblin master goblin play? No. Sure. That's all right. And now, I mean, Domri raid plus fresh lands is some kind of card <laughs> selection. You know, that's... A non-zero amount of selecting your cards. Yeah, th it's really sweet to play Domi Raid with Corsair of Crufts. Yeah, I've it's heard. It's so sweet. <laughs> I've never had that little little combo it's, come together it's against sort of, me. It's sort of like drawing three cards a turn most of the time. Oh wow, that seems <laughs> that seems like a bit <laughs> of an exaggeration. No, that's exactly what it is. So if you're playing a deck that's like thirty creatures, ten spells, and twenty lands. But what if it's just land land? You know, that's only two cards. Right, but if you, if you can, and remember, you have you have iterations of fetch lands to use. So when you're shuffling the deck with a fetch land or with a knight of the reliquary, yeah, most of the time it's like drawing three cards a turn. <coughs> All right, I can get into that. All right, so let's see what is going on. Board's being developed a little bit. We got some got some good mana on both sides. So, not going to be much of a game decided by that aspect. But, I mean, taking he Alan has taken a lot of damage from his lands here. The uh, Helix is looking good and that it was able to recuperate some of that. Otherwise, he would have taken... Yeah. What, nine damage from his lands? Eight? Yeah. Maybe? Playing that Tamiyo, the namesake card. Interested to see what he's going to do. Just freeze some dudes. I like that. Yep. That freeze ability is powerful. And then shove, kill that Domri. That that was that, that oh, was certainly gee, look, that, that to me it looked good. good, huh? Didn't it? That <laughs> did look pretty good right there. I have to give you that. Uh, yeah, the card, it's a hell of a card. <coughs> and remember, these are sl these are asleep, so they can't yeah. swing now. In fact, you can even just with Tamiya sleep their guys two twice in a row and <laughs> just kill them. <laughs> that, that won't be the case here, but no, that seems legit. I um, mean. Yes, uh, yes, this is live, Ku Kayuno. Yes, we are live. <coughs> All right, let's see how he's going to recuperate from this. Play another, <laughs> another Domri. Domri. Domri number two. Sure. Reveals, so draws another bird. So we can probably just kill that Domri too, if probably. we if we wanted. Um, possibly at the cost of your Tamiyo, but though if you just <laughs> if you just use the Nakato to to swing and you make him jump block with the bird, that's fine too because you just he loses a card from the jump. That's only a good play though if Alan has anything to follow up as a blocker because he's got to block this two two token that swings. Okay, so scavenging use is a big deal, uh, and the reason scavenging use is a big deal is uh, both of these decks are gonna put a ton of creatures in the yard, and if nobody finds a removal spell, I, my my experience with the uh, the scavenging use mirror matchup mm -hmm. uh, in these creature decks is like the first person to to draw and play one that the other opponent can't answer with a removal spell, just like hands down wins the game. That doesn't um, surprise me. Like that's that's just how it goes every time I play you know, another Naya Zoo deck or a, a five color deck like this or like even even Jund. The first player to have one is in such big control. It's not just relevant for making a big guy and getting life. It's super relevant for controlling the power and toughness on Tarmogoyfs. It's <laughs> super relevant for controlling the power and toughness on Knight of the Reliquary. Um, and in, in this case, if Alan has a Snapcaster or something, which we know he does, it controls those super well. But we're going to bolt it right away. Good Can plan. Good, Good call. Plan. And guess what else he has in his hand there, Marky Mark? What Alan has? Yeah. I didn't see what. A little time time reinforcements, reinforcements. Which is looking pretty damn good. So, here. yeah, it's, it does seem good on this board, especially when Chris's only threat is the uh, this worthless uh, goblin token. <laughs> <laughs> but that token does swing for two. Uh, it does? So. Or the bird swings for one. 
Or the birth wings were one in the air, right over those tokens. Yeah, so, I mean, like I said, this timely certainly looks pretty good here, but I'm curious. I think I think I would board this end. I think I can condone boarding a card like I wonder, this. I wonder what he took out. Um, you know, I it seems better than the Geist in some scenarios, but there are also scenarios where you... I just think Geist, Geist seems pretty poor in this matchup in general, oh, so I don't think it takes it's yeah, much. It's certainly, well, Geist is poor... So notice, notice that Allen has been firing off bolts, helix, and tribal flames left and mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I mean, Chris, Chris hasn't had a, an effective blocker for a Geist all game until he just resolved this night. I mean, Geist would have been hacking away at this this Nicotl, or I'm sorry, this hierarch, this bird, this one one token. So I don't know. Um, I mean, definitely Geist is you can't count on it, especially on the draw when your opponent gets the first chance to play creatures, but. Right. I, I'm not. I don't think timely reinforcements is a guaranteed better card than Geist in the matchup, especially when Geist does such an Earth Jay's like job of killing planeswalkers. Yeah, I mean, definitely that, like you said, that ability where, with a deck with this much burn, and I mean, especially with Snapcasters, which he's shown he also does have, sometimes one hit from a four four will be good enough to get the job done. Considering, I mean, I don't think really. Chris has had much damage done to him Ooh, by the second Tamio. Uh, things aside, lands this game. I mean, has he really even been attacked this game? No. <coughs> Maybe last turn that was no, it. No, he's done. I think he's done eight damage to himself. Um, Which, yeah, I mean. So, for those of you following along, Alan just minus his Tamio that had three loyalty, putting it to one. Freezing. S putting two guys to sleep. Yeah, he slept. Uh, the token in the night. And then he plays another Tamio, plus it up to five. So he's going to draw some cards off of the combat damage here. <coughs> it's got that second time, like so. It looks like he did board in both. <laughs> second time was looking marginally less good here. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's exactly that's exactly right. I think I can get behind boarding in exactly one. Right. For this reason. Um. So take a look at the <laughs> so the Tamio here. Allen's chose to. Use the second one to tap Knight and Goblin, meaning mm -hmm. that Chris's only attackers, barring a haste threat, are three zero ones. And obviously, he can swing for one with a with a bird over the top for mm -hmm. flying with the exalted trigger. But these Tamios are brutal in the uh, the mirror matchup. And then a Tarbo Wave comes down, which presumably is pretty big. We got a couple Planeswalkers creatures. I think we got five six maybe. I'm gonna guess five six. Yep. <laughs> And another game, this game's looking like it's winding down. Alan's got a couple cards in hand. Uh, much stronger board. On board ways to freeze more creatures. Ooh, getting in there. I like it. All right. Much yeah, respect. Do your worst. I, I've seen a white card in hand. Looking like it's path. Let's get that Tarmogoyf out so of the way. Pathogoyf is fine, I guess. So what basics do you think Alan has in the deck? I'm going to guess just like a forest and a... And a plains, uh, maybe? Plains, maybe, yeah. yeah. I can't imagine an island being there. That seems horrible. And mountain doesn't seem like it does much. I can see a mountain being in the deck just for, like, aggressive decks specifically, but I'm pretty sure last game we only searched for two basics. Uh, and he got past four times. Yeah. <laughs> so... Was, was it was it forest plains he had out last time? Say what? Was it was it Forest Plains that he had he had out last yeah, time? Yeah, I believe so. I believe so. Interested to see what what's going to go down here. So timely uh, does get him three more tokens here. Um, he does presently have fewer creatures. Oh, he does. Noteworthy. <coughs> but he doesn't anymore. Any life, <laughs> but yeah, not anymore. Maybe you're supposed to just pre-combat that to. Yeah, make sure that, that's, that would be my guess. Okay, so there's the planes. That's probably all the basics. Honestly, I that that is pretty funny. I do definitely think it was right to pre-combat. Oh yeah, hundred hundred percent. Um, <laughs> which you wouldn't really think about that, but mattered here. And now he's probably never going to trigger it because now he's just playing out a bunch of random dorks. He's playing them all out. Got another goif. Just jam it. Why not? Beautiful. God, look at the, that mana base. <laughs> Thing of beauty. Yeah. Yeah, it's a rainbow. That is five different shock lands in play right now. Yep, yep, yep. Hell yeah. It, it looks like he's like uh, he's like a, a vendor. You know, he's like 
He's at he's at an SCG standard event from four years ago, and he's trying to sell you uh, these brand new RTR shocks. So my when I play this matchup with Naya Pyle, and I know Chris's list is substantially different from mine, um, but I think my my Tribal Flames matchup is like I'd have to look at my stats. But I think it's like four and one. I, mean, I haven't played it very much, but in the past year and a half or whatever, I think I I think I'm four and one against it. The one time I lost was to uh, to Justin Gebbing here at the store, who uh, okay. I was I actually went to I think I went to 15, and he goes Tribal Flames, Tribal Flames, Snapcaster, Tribal Flames. And I'm like, all right, you got it. Yeah, that'll, <laughs> but that'll uh, be. but yeah, I think the matchup was favorable. I think because uh, your your mana is just smoother. You know, you have a card like Scavenging Use where you can make a lot of green mana. Whereas even if Allen has scavenging use, he can't reliably produce a lot of green. Yeah, I mean, he's got <coughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lands in play, and what only three produce green? Yeah. Yeah, three. Yeah, whereas Chris has four in play, and three of them make green, <coughs> which we saw him aggressively fetch for because he had mm -hmm. scoos earlier. But so this is definitely a slow burn. Alan's just incrementally get more cards, get more cards. Chris is having some pretty solid top decks to be able to keep them. Uh, honestly, they're not even that great, but he's having moderately okay, good enough draw steps to keep him alive. Sure. Which honestly is one of the most demoralizing things ever when yeah. you're like, okay, this card isn't the best card I could have drawn here, but it's not the worst, and I'm not dead, I guess. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not dead. I guess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what do you think realistically Chris could draw here to kind of... So, Bonfire of the Damned Miracle for four, <laughs> five. He could cast. It. He could actually Miracle it for six here and wipe the entire board and the Planeswalker by tapping his mana dorks. Um, That'd be sweet. And I would... If I I play one Bonfire, and I definitely would have brought it in in this mirror oh, yeah. matchup. I mean, if, so you, if you have a Bonfire in your board, yep. so if and he, you're not it, bringing it in here... But I, like, I, I happen to know so. Chris doesn't have one because I looked at the board earlier. But if he had one here, he could have miracle it for six. Uh... And that would have swept everything, including Tamiyo. <laughs> Which sounds pretty sick. Yeah. <laughs> so, Alan, looks like he's just going to kill him with this board. I mean, he's got two cards in hand, land, and a three mana do literally nothing in the form of timely reinforcements. <laughs> okay. He, so, so Chris did bring in double Kitchen Finks. Um, Which is not looking too bad here. It's... Okay. <laughs> I mean, he's not. The, the thing in a is, good spot. the thing is, Tamio can just minus two and tap down whatever he plays. Yeah. So um, still D O B. Yeah, dead on board, dead as on we board. say in the biz. Yes. <laughs> also, date of birth, as they say yeah. uh, at the IRS. Yeah, they do say that there. Also at the B M V, not the D M V. No longer called that. I've learned. It's called the. It's called the. It's called the D M V in some states. I'm sorry. It's called the B M. It's called both in different states, right? I don't know. <laughs> what did you learn exactly? <laughs> I I went to the BMV, the and Bureau of Motor like, Vehicles, and I was curious. I asked them about that, and I believe they said in Ohio. They're in Ohio, it's only now DMVs. B -M -V. Oh, it's only Bs in Ohio. Yeah, I think I it's think the Bureau. I now. think other states, the department still lives on, but I I'm not certain about that. Ooh, you know what? I'm just noticing. What's Alan's that? gonna get some minus points here for a dual dex path to exile being paired with a. Promo path to exile. <laughs> <laughs> he likes variety. He val he values variety. Most uh, economists know, agree that, that we do. Specifically, <laughs> the dual decks version is really raunching me out right now. But looks like Chris has packed it in. So I, I will say that, like I like I said, um, you know, I think this is a good matchup for Naya Pile, just because your deck is a little more sleek. Mm -hmm. uh, however. Um, I you know I've never actually had someone resolve a Tamio against me. Yeah, and maybe I, I ask, maybe maybe I would be terrified. I mean I'm kind of uh, curious about this this Naya Pio in particular because I think I think Domi Rage seems not that great of a card. I think if I'm playing that so density of creatures, I'd probably just rather have something like a company. Yeah, so so Domri Raid is a great one of. It's not great in multiples. For one, because every copy of Domri Raid makes all other Domri Raids worse. <laughs> um, not only by the Planeswalker rule, but also um, because they're not creatures themselves. Correct. Um, I've played a Domri in the past when I've played as many as 30 creatures, but it's never been great. It's yeah. especially not good in an Abrupt Decay format, which right now is kind of an Abrupt Decay format. But it doesn't... I don't really think so. 
I, know, I, it's, I, it's not like it used. It's not like Splinter Twin days yeah. where that that was an abrupt decay format. Yeah. Or the infect, you know, an infect is big, abrupt decay is big. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not a it's not a super heavy abrupt decay format right now. The only reason I say it is partially is like the resurgence of, you know, originally the the resurgence of Death Shadow Jund made Abrupt Decay a bigger card, because that also fed the decks Abzan and Jund, because they were natural predators of, of Jund Shadow, but but currently it's not really an Abrupt Decay format, so I think Domri's good in that sense. Um, but uh, no, the, car- the card, it's really good on turn two. It's yeah. pretty good at grinding when you play it on turn two, but it's, uh, you know, I- I'd rather have basically any four drop walker <laughs> yeah. in its play. I'd rather have an Elspeth Knight Errant most of the time. Um rather, rather have like a Tamio if I'm playing blue. Too often it's just not gonna do much. And I think if you I mean we saw him plus and hit both times when he did it in this particular match and it yeah. still didn't even look that great. I, mean, well, he, I will I will say Chris, I mean <laughs> Chris was frankly just getting straight out valued by that Tamio. Yeah. Um in the Planeswalker fight between Domri and Tamiya, I think Tamiya is going to come out on top more often than not. Yeah, where, where, Dom, where Domri is really good is against um, is against decks where, like, so it's super good against things like Merfolk. Because if you play your turn one Nakatl, mm-hmm. and then you, let's say, you turn two Lightning Helix, their guy, which that's a reasonable line. You know, if you go turn one Nakatl, turn two Helix, your guy, it's a fine play. But then if you drop the, drop the Domri on three and use the fight, to fight their yeah, the, fight the next mer- the next Merfolk they play with your Nakatl, and then Domri still at one. You have a Nakatl. That match is going to go heavily in your favor. Um, yeah, I mean, and even for the uninitiated, I, I would think Domri raids fight ability would be good in this matchup, but it just really never looked particularly. No, it, powerful. yeah, it's never found like it, it's it's sort of like Garuk Relentless. You know, you you want to play Domri raid when you can use your. Three threes to fight one ones. You know, it's sort of like it's sort of like you want to play Garuk Relentless in Legacy, when you can be fighting your opponent's, uh, you know, Deathrite Shamans, right, um, or fighting your opponent's unflipped Delvers, things like that. <coughs> but all right, well, looks like we got about thirteen minutes left in this round. Presumably, most people are going to be finishing up. Yeah. So, uh, but let us know in chat, uh, as Victor mentioned earlier, what you would like to see. We got. Lots Let's of spicy stuff. We got uh, Boggles, Ponza, Merfolk. Uh, some company decks. A lot of Mono Blue Tron. Got some. Four Color Sahili, maybe? Yeah, we got some Four Color Sahili, a, a Kiki Cord. Uh, B- Burn. I thought that said Born. Like, who brought a who brought their Born of the Gods pile to Modern Night? <laughs> I'm not seeing any. Humans. Any human? Or are oh, you seeing humans? We got, we got a humans right there. I'm not seeing any Grixis Shadow, which is making um, me a little bit sad. No, no G Shaddy. Um, huh. Blue white control, also a deck that I think is pretty well positioned. Currently. Yeah, I think I think the deck's good. Not um, the most exciting to watch, but you know, if the fans want, I it, like. I think it's exciting to watch. It's exciting to I watch them try to to, watch. to try to. You know, it's it's exciting to watch them try to fight to get to like turn six and be alive, mm-hmm. and then slowly do their thing. I think that stuff's fun. Um. Ooh, we even seen an amulet titan. If he's doing well, oh, who's, who's playing? Who's playing there. that? Uh, Andrew Ours, like O U R S, like it's it's not Our it's Andrew. not yours. It's ours. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it, well, I'd love to see some amulet titan. All right. Well, we'll take a look. We'll see how who's doing well. Oh, currently. so well, we got someone. We got someone uh, advocating for the blue white. So maybe maybe that's what we'll do. All right. All right. If they win, we'll we we look. we're we're. Generally, only uh, you know want to play people that are winning because that way we know that they're good or that the decks aren't janky. Um, but yeah, I we'll will say a lot of bad people have done well at tournaments. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> That's true. Uh, but you know, it gives us a little bit more confidence. All right, more confidence. we'll be back soon, folks. Don't don't go too far. Hold it down. Ten minutes. Maybe take a poop. And yeah, make make some and pizza rolls. Back. Come right back to your computer. All right. We'll see you guys then.